Have you guys ever wanted a build that's just gonna carry you directly through the game and it is incredibly easy and fun to play? I have that build right here. It is super fun, it is incredibly effective, and you're gonna feel like you're playing the game on easy mode, so let's get into it. Now getting right into the build here, this is gonna be a level 150 pure strength build. That's right, there is nothing that is hard about this build, it is just quality and effective. You don't have to put any buffs on yourself, there's no flame grant me strength, golden vow, howl of shariri, nothing along those lines. What you see is what you get, and that's what I love about this build. It is simple, but incredible. Incredibly powerful. You can summon Stormhawk Den, and he will give you a 30% stance damage boost, which I highly recommend you do. But other than that, there is no buffs that are needed. So how do we make this incredibly easy to use build? Well, let's get into that now. We are going to be using the Great Mace. I wanted to use a weapon that I had never used before and that I don't see a whole lot of other people using, and this mace was that. I used this mace a lot in Dark Souls 3, and since it carried over into Elden Ring, I wanted to show it some love, and I'm incredibly glad that I did. Its physical attack power at 25 is going to be 283 plus 516, and with the Cragblade Ash of War, which we're going to talk about in just a second, it's going to have a strength scaling of S, which is the highest that you can go, making this weapon stagger and hit like a truck. Now, the Cragblade Ash of War is where this weapon is really going to shine, and it matches up perfectly with the high strength damage that we're doing. The reason this weapon benefits so well from Cragblade is because you are going to activate a buff that gives you 15% physical damage, 10% stance damage, and 50% stamina damage to enemies that are blocking with shields. So long story short, you are just going to bowl through everybody that is in this game, bosses will stagger incredibly quickly, people with shields have no chance against you, and overall, you're going to pretty much get staggers constantly, allowing you to run your way through this game. There are no attributes required to wield this weapon except 28 strength, and you can get this weapon early in the game if you decide to do it, but it is going to be a little bit of a trek for you. You're going to start Limgrave and run all the way up through Lyrny of the Lakes, and it's going to be right before the Grand Lift of Dectus in a chest inside of a soldier's campsite. You will have to maneuver around some pretty powerful enemies, especially if you are really early on in the game, but it is doable and it won't give you too much trouble. The talismans required to make this build work are overall pretty quality talismans. I have the Dragon Crest Great Shield talisman, the Rottenwing Sword Insignia, the Axe talisman, and the Viridian Amber Medallion. So let me explain why I have each one of these and where you can get them for yourself. I have the Dragon Crest Great Shield talisman because, like most greatsword builds or melee builds in general, you are going to be in the fray a lot and it is inevitable you are going to get hit. So this is going to allow us to get that 20% damage negation that we need to take less damage overall, allowing the quality of our build to go up. The Rotwing Sword Insignia is going to raise our attack power boost based on successive attacks, and some of you may be thinking, well, why are you using this on a mace build? Well, in 1.09, maces got a really big buff, and they swing a lot faster than they used to, so we're going to be able to get that 13% increase to our attack power pretty quickly with light attacks, so we can get on to rocking our next talisman, which is the Axe Talisman that's going to allow us to get 10% on our charged heavies. These charged heavies are going to stagger bosses typically within two hits. Never have I staggered bosses this easy, except for my great club build, which I just made, and I'm going to link that in the video description down below, as well as in the top right here, so you can go check that out if you want. But this is also going to stack with our flask, which is what we're going to get into in just a second. As far as the Viridian Amber Medallion plus two, this is just going to greatly increase our stamina. You don't have to use this talisman here, but I would recommend you use a stamina talisman, whether it's the Green Turtle talisman or this one. Regardless, maces or larger weapons are going to eat up your stamina, and this is super important to have because it's going to allow you to keep swinging for longer, be able to roll out of the way if you need to after swinging. Overall, more stamina is a great thing for this build. Now, as far as where to get each one of these talismans, I'll go over that really, really quickly. The Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman is going to be located right here on the map in the Ephriel Brace of the Hallowed Tree Site of Grace, right near a broken down church. The Rottenwing Sword Insignia is going to be found at the end of Millicent's questline. I have a video for that, and I'll link that in the description below, as well as put a little icon here in the top right so you guys can click on that and figure that out if you need it. The Axe Talisman is going to be located in a chest within the Mistwood Ruins, and the Viridian Amber Medallion Plus 2 is going to be located near the Hallig Tree Town Plaza site of Grace, and it's going to be in a chest guarded by a few corpses. Now, real quick, while I have all your all's attention, thank you so much for watching to this part in the video. I do appreciate it, and if you want to hit that sub button for me, that would mean a ton. We just hit 10k subs, which was absolutely incredible, and we are on the road to 20k now, which is going to be phenomenal, and I think we can get it before the end of the year. So, if you want to be part of that, make sure to hit that sub button. I appreciate the heck out of all of you guys, and let's get back into the video. Now, as far as the Flask of Wonders physic, we are going to be using two really good tiers for this build. I will give you an option of a third, just in 
in case you want to switch things up a little bit. But the first tier we're going to be using is the Stone Barb Crack tier, which is going to help you break enemy stances. This tier is going to buff you with 30% stance damage, and it's also going to give you 30% stamina damage to blocking enemies. So overall, just making you be able to wreck through the entire game. And then the second tier we're using is the Spike Crack tier, which is going to give you a 50% boost to your charged attack. So those heavy charged R2s we're going to be doing, we're actually going to get about 26% damage boost for that because it's going to stack really well with our Axe Talisman. The third tier that you can use, if you don't want to use one of these tiers, I would recommend obviously going with a stamina tier, whether it be the green spill tier, which is going to boost your stamina as a whole, or the green burst tier, which is going to boost your stamina recovery speed. Either one of those will work really, really well. As I stated before, stamina is something that you're going to be lacking occasionally when you're fighting long boss fights, so this could be a great option for you. Now, the Stone Barb Crack tier can be found in the east part of Kaelid after you kill the Putrid Avatar by the Erd Tree, and if you want to snag the Spiked Crack tier, this one is incredibly easy to find, and it's just on a little altar next to the Erd Tree in the Mistwood, as well as the Green Spill Crystal tier. Now, as far as the armor pieces that we're using for this build, I am using the Banished Knight Helm, the Hallowed Tree Knight Armor, the Bloodhound Knight Gauntlets, and the Scaled Greaves, which are going to wrap you in a nice package of 57 poise, allowing you not to be staggered around the battlefield as much as you normally would. I find this gives a great aesthetic to this build, and you don't have to use the Hallowed Tree Armor if you don't want to. You can use any of the others, like the Redman Knight Armor, the Kaku Knight Armor, or the Lindale Knight Armor, whichever one suits your fit. But I chose this one because I think it matches everything really, really well, and I think overall we look phenomenal. If you want to find all these armor pieces, the Banished Knight Helm is going to be dropped from Banished Knights pretty much all over the lands between. The Hallig Tree Knight Armor is going to be dropped by Hallig Tree Knights in the Hallig Tree. The Bloodhound Knight Gauntlet is going to be located in the Glimmer Hero's Grave, dropped by a Bloodhound Knight that's guarding the Glimmer Knight Armor, so that's a two for one. And the Scaled Greaves are going to be dropped by an invader in your second letter from Volcano Manor when you're hunting down the Tarnished. And guys, that's going to be it for our Cragblade Champion build. Thank you so much for watching until the end of the video. If you enjoyed this kind of content, make sure to sub and hit that notification bell so you can know when I'm making more content. I did just drop a Faith Strength build that is incredible, as well as a Glass Cannon Intelligence Strength build, so go check those out. I'll leave those in the comments as well. And guys, until next time, stay safe, enjoy the game, and I'll see you guys in the next one.